Welcome to the party. Topic Thunder, John and the Greg, back at you for another Monday. Greg, how are you, sir? I'm still at home. Yeah, unfortunately, so am I. But hey, like I said, another week, another yep. what? Half an inch of hair grows on me. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, our topic today, uh, Greg, you're wearing the appropriate shirt for this. It is a um, one of my favorite Marvel comics I've ever read was the Civil War story arc. Okay, yeah. Um, not the one in the movie, but the one of the comic, which the movie was based off of a little roughly. Yeah. Kind um, of roughly. It was the idea that if we had superheroes in the real world, mm-hmm. um, and let me know if I'm wrong on this. This is I'm going off of memory here. So if we had superheroes in the world that Iron Man sided with the idea that they should be registered. Registered and regulated. Yeah. Yeah. Tr- uh, regulated by the government. Right. Mm-hmm. Was it the government or was it like the United States or was it by NATO it was a, it, yeah, it was like a NATO ish kind of kind of thing where yeah, I mean you just needed to to train and regulate right super powered people. People that way they would be properly trained, they'd have the best mm-hmm. equipment, they would live in houses and the drawback was you knew who they were, they mm-hmm. had no secret identity. Correct. Um, and I think that's where Cap was. You're taking the freedom away from these people because eventually, now that the government has some sort of control over them, yeah. when do they become weapons that the government aims them yeah. at? It was it was taking away their free will. And in the comics, they, they explained it much more than they did in the film. It was, yeah, right. you had to lose the mask. You had to, you had to ditch, um, ditch your secret identity. And become kind of a public pers- personality, and the government said that they would take care of you, right? But at the now, same time, if you if you were overpowered, like they're like, oh, you're you're kind of dangerously powered. We're gonna tuck you away somewhere for now, right? And I and what started it in the and and the, and the movie didn't have time to delve into this because of the history that the comic books had. So mm-hmm. for someone like Spider Man, where for thirty years he was a costume crime fighter that made a lot yep. of enemies, mm-hmm. and it was going to put his family in danger. Those are the type of people that were like, "Whoa, I don't know about this." Oh, and if you didn't sign the, I, I know it's not the Scovia or. Sokovia Accords is what they called it in the movie. Right. But what did they call it in the Superhuman Registration Act, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So I guess, Greg, I'm asking you, what are your thoughts on this? I know that if you didn't join it, you were now considered a criminal and they right. would hunt you down. Whether you were a villain or you were <clears throat> a, uh, a superhero, they would hunt you down and arrest you for going against the law. Yeah. So where do you fall on this, sir? Is Tony Stark right or is Captain America right? I I tended to side with Cap in this okay. one, um, where <clears throat> the slippery slope was very visible to me. Um, where if you were, because I th- I think it's pretty realistic to think that if you were some kind of super powered person, whichever government you live under is going to want to utilize you for fill in the blank. Right. Um, you know you're you're going to be used as a weapon. Either right. either for depending on what your power base is, as a straight out tank, um, or you're going to be used for like an espionage purpose or an assassin or you know what have you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, th- I think that's pretty realistic. Um, different universe, different comic, but of course. I think the boys would probably also there be a go. pretty good representation. Where if you're not controlled by the government, you're going to be controlled by a company. Yes. And that company is going to be in bed with the government. Right. At some point or somewhere. Or they're going which, to want that government right. contract. Which right. is actually kind of what Stark was. Stark Industries was very much in bed with the government. Right. So, so when you think about it in that respect, I was I was more cap. You know, let good guys do good things and stop bad guys. Um, I could totally see Peter Parker's point of view where he's like, I- I've been Spider-Man since I was 16. Yeah. 
And and you bet, like in the comic, he did unmask himself in front of right. everybody. Yep. He came out and said, my name's Peter Parker. I've been Spider-Man since I was 16. And it, like every one of his villains immediately tried to attack his house in Queens. Yep. Or, yep. Or, yeah. Or, wherever he was from. So I thought mm-hmm. about this as a real world scenario. Right. And mm-hmm. I think what's funny is there have been some a couple of movies out there. Bright Burn comes to mind. Um, uh, the Boys, that show. Um, and I can see where you would want them government regulated. I can understand that. But I'm, I, when I first read the comic book, I'm a huge Captain America fan. Um, anybody that knows me knows that. Um, and so I automatically went to his side. I didn't even know what his point of view was. But as I read his side, I was like, okay, yeah, no, it's putting a lot of people in danger. But at the same time, you know, like, go ahead right. and say something. Well, as you say, what you're getting at is that moral dilemma. Of yeah. If you're, if you're honest with yourself, you can see both sides of the coin on this. Yes, absolutely. Um, I thought it was one of the, the best, um, what do you call those? One of the best debates I've ever like in, in this, mm-hmm. in terms of Marvel and, and w- what we're talking about here, it was one of the best, like made you stop and go, well, they both have sides. Like they both mm-hmm. have a point. Maybe the way they're going about it is the wrong way to go about that point. Right. But, um, I, I stand, I, st- I stand with cap, you know, I, I think it's, but I understand where Tony's coming from. I just think Tony becoming this, it, it almost became this law enforcement thing where he right. was hiring bad guys to hunt down good guys. And Well, and, and the point, so in the movie, part of the things that really pushed that act was... Wanda, right? Right, right. So Scarlet Witch kind of contained that explosion, but then lost control of it. It blew through a building and some people died right. because it blew through a building and you're like right. that's terrible um in the comic you, there was a there still is this group called the new warriors and they are like mm, late teens early 20s kind of sea level heroes um and they're fighting this other group but they had also contracted with a tv company to make a superhero reality show right and so they're fighting, and the fight leads them next to a school, to an elementary school. And one of the bad guys they're fighting gets hit a bunch of times and loses it. And he has, like, this nuclear explosion. Yeah, moment. he can, he mean, can like, explode. Yeah. yeah. So he causes this explosion and takes out a school, like, takes out yeah. an elementary school. Right. So you think about, in the film... It was, it was an off. It was a couple floors of an office building, in a foreign country. Yeah. Most people looked at that and were kind of like, "Okay, that's that's bad. That's right. bad." Because Marvel or or Disney was not going to go out and be like, "Yeah, they destroyed an elementary school and killed hundreds of kids." Right. Yeah. That, so. That changes the argument. That does little. change the argument for sure because it, it makes you think that naturally, and I'm imagine being any one of those parents, you would be mm-hmm. just I mean, if that was a real scenario, if that was a real thing, think of how much gun control is talked about now simply because people walk into schools and right. and do what they do. Now you you add the idea that somebody's a superhero and right. they are the situation goes bad, like all mm-hmm. situations do in life, even if you are for police officers, for soldiers, for right. anybody, it always goes wrong. Like, it doesn't always go according to plan. Mm-hmm. So having this type of, um, I just think it's a really interesting question. I don't think there's a dead answer. My only thing is I understand where Cap was coming from because Cap was saying, eventually this government's going to point you where you don't want to go. Right. You know? Well, the and, other piece... And that was the problem. The other piece that they didn't really touch on in the movies was part of that... Um, they call it the initiative in the comics. Part of the initiative, and that was Tony's side of things, was he was going to put a small uh, contingent of automated 
robots in like Iron Man armors in each major city to help control any uh, super villain level threat that could be there, which ultimately became Ultron. That was in the comic. Like he was, you know, it was a suit of armor in every city is what Tony was going for. You mean Ultron, you mean Ultron took over those things. He didn't, they didn't become Ultron. Well, but that was the plan. That was like, when you see that factory that was cranking out, um, Iron Men, those are you, are, are you, those talking, automatons? You know, are you talking about in the movie? It's both. So they, they kind of split it up in the movies because they've got Age of Ultron and then they have Civil War. Right. But, but Age of Ultron, like where Tony had that factory that was cranking out those suits right, of but armor. That's, but that's Hank Pym that created Ultron. In the comic, yes. Right. But in, so like in the comics, like that, that concept of having Iron Men in every city. Yeah. That's, that was part of what Tony wanted to do was create almost like these shock troopers. Okay. All over the world controlled by him, but then the government would have control of them. And so that became another point where Cap's like, you, that's, that's what the Nazis wanted to do. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. That all right. They wanted stormtroopers in every, in every part of the world answerable to one man. Right. And the cap's like, no, I've seen this yeah. before. It's not going to end well. Yeah, yeah. So, what is it? What is it? Uh, absolute power corrupts absolutely or something like yeah. that? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I think we're both on the side with uh, Cap that eventually if you give somebody too much control, they start calling the shots and they start pointing whatever weapon they can at, or they start using that weapon as a way to force their will upon. Yeah. And I, that's... That's what I got. How Cap was like, no, we can't do this. We got to figure out another way. They, they, at first they call it a deterrent, but right. then when it's not a deterrent, it's it's a weapon. So right, right. So, um, the other one I wanted to talk about, and we got time, is there was they also brought back as the movie came out, Civil War. They brought back the a story idea for that called Civil War Two. All right, and this one was about Captain Marvel and Iron Man saw two different sides to it. Mm -hmm. um, and what it was about was, I think there was one mutant or inhuman, whatever it was that could, uh, he was a pre cock. So he had pre um, cognition over what was coming in the future. Mm -hmm. So it became this debate over who do, should you punish somebody because the future says they're going to commit a crime that they haven't committed yet. So it's Correct. this whole minority report, right? Right. So yes. Tony Tony was against it because he's like, you, they haven't done it. You're you're punishing people for things they haven't done. There's still time to course correct. Whereas I think it was Captain Marvel was like, no, we know officially they're going to do it. So let's stop it. So we never have to like, we never mm -hmm. have to tell a parent that their child died because we knew this was coming and we couldn't stop. And correct. We, yeah. Wait, we knew it was coming. We chose not to stop it type of thing right mm -hmm. so where do you fall on that Ugh. yeah um if you can do it the right way and this is kind of going back to the minority report kind of thing like right. if you can catch them just before they do it then yeah i think that's probably a good idea oh, that's a good point um but if it's like hey we know in six months you're going to do something bad we're going to get you now then I think there's a better way to go about that. Because, like, yeah, in the comic, it was literally smash down their door, arrest them, put them in prison with the evidence of, we you, we know you were going to do this. And right. that doesn't seem right. Um, it seems unconstitutional. Yeah, so what would you say? Would you say it's more of a, that would be more of a, well, we know you're going to do this in six months, mm -hmm. or we have a precognition that, or a precock, telling you that you're going to do this in six months. We'll just survey you. Yeah, that's right? a possibility. Yeah, we can just watch you. And if you're going to make these moves, mm -hmm. would you interfere in terms of telling them not to? See, then you get into like all these crazy time travel theories of if you know your future, you've already changed it. So, yeah. yeah. So who okay. knows? I, I, and to be honest, um, by the time Civil War Two came out, which was three or four years ago, I God, it's been that long. I think so. 
wow. because I remember talking about people talking to people about it the last time I went to Gen Con, and that was I think three or four years ago. Okay, um, I didn't read it. I mean, I had I had gotten out of mainstream comics by then. Yeah, um, I wasn't reading it, and I still really don't. Well, I don't now because they're not producing them. But any Marvel or any DC, I had gotten out of that completely at that point. I was reading all independents. Um, so yeah, I never quite uh, got back to that one to pick it up. Actually, I, I never picked it up to read it. What I did was uh, I just watched people review it on uh, YouTube, you know, like Comics Monger or something like that. Yeah, or... uh, Comic Storian. Comic Storian. Actually, yeah. yeah, he actually broke it down. So I just listened to him for about fifteen minutes, and I was like, okay, that was a story. You actually reminded me. I do own them. Like, a, a oh, guy, you do? I do. A guy that uh, got rid of. He had a short box of random stuff yeah. and he was moving and he's like here you're still into comics you can have them and i was like okay and he i saw he had the entire run of civil war ii in there i'm like oh i should read this yeah haven't, haven't done, done it, it. <laughs> <laughs> well i think it's um i think they tried but i don't think it had the same impact that the first one did so. no uh comic people are pretty pretty good with that they're like hey we have this thing called civil war we're gonna make everything about that yeah yeah. so so all right i think we'll end it there so let's go to our random fact of the day and we have approximately 80 percent of closed door elevator buttons aren't connected (laughs) (laughs) You're pushing it, make yourself You're pushing it, and yeah. it goes off when it wants to, anyway. So I, yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that before. Like it's it's a seven second delay time, whether time, whether, yeah. whether you push the floor button or whether you push push the closed door button. It's seven seconds either way. I I also wonder that with uh, busy intersections. What do, you, what do you mean? That that little button that people push on the side is, is yeah. that really does that really send a timer to anybody, or is that just to satisfy oh, people? No. It could just be to satisfy. Right. So, I, I guys, a, a behaviorist study one time where the people thought the elevators were moving so slow in uh, in this one office building that they were just getting dozens and dozens of complaints that the elevators are so flipping slow. We got to get to work, things like that. Yeah. And so they had them inspected and like everything. And uh, the engineers were like, the they're running at 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 parameter like they're they're right the efficiency is dead on we can't speed them up they're not slowing down and so they installed mirrors outside of the like when you're looking at the elevator doors and the services it's all reflective now it's a mirror okay and they installed those and within a week they were getting uh people saying how appreciative they were that they sped up the elevators so what does that say behavior wise? It just means that they were bored and as soon as they could look at themselves or look at other people without being too noticed, the time passed a little faster for them. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. Uh-huh. Like I don't I don't understand the correlation there, but I'm guessing Oh, well, it just gave them something to do. I mean, the this study this particular case study i read about it in college so this was before cell phones this was before yeah. anybody was just tooling around on their phone waiting for an elevator uh, all they had to do was sit there and wait uh, remember yeah. when all we had to do was sit there and wait no i don't do you remember the god-awful lines for great america when we just had to sit there and wait <laughs> uh, kind, kind of but i mean that was you were talking with people i mean that was you know, well, it's, if, it's like you, if you if you went with people, if you went by yourself, oh, I never kind of rough. Myself. You know, I never went by myself. So I sorry, did. buddy. I did. <laughs> Sat there by myself. <laughs> All right. Well, I did there. So for those of you that are still listening, thank you for listening. Don't go to Great America by yourself. And for Johnny and the Greg, Topic Thunder out. <laughs>